it's hard to find a single device stereo solution that offers all you can dream of. The Cocktail Audio X35 on review here doesn't offer that either since you luckily still need a set of loudspeakers, but for the rest it has about any function I could dream up. How do you categorize this machine? It is a 2 times 100 watt class D amp plus FM and DAB plus tuners, a DAC and a CD player. At storage and it's a ripper, streamer and burner. It's even a digital recorder so if you still have final records you want to add, no problem for it also has a moving magnet phono input. But recording from the radio or other sources is no problem either. Since the X35 can also function as a music server using DNLA, FTP and Samba protocols, you don't need a NAS either. It can even wake on LAN, switch on when other devices in the network ask it to. And to top things off, it can also function as a RUN endpoint, airplay renderer and is capable of decoding MQA files. Now if it would have cost 5 grand I would have said of course. But the European retail price is 1749 euros including 21 VAT, the European sales tax. The 44 cm wide, 33 cm deep and 10 cm high X35 is solidly built and is available in both silver and black versions. The front on the left holds a large rotary encoder for volume. Pressing the knob switches mute on and off. Lower down we find the standby button with indicator light, a 6.3 mm headphone jack, a USB host port, an aux in on 3.5 mm jack and the infrared sensor. Above that the slot loading CD drive with eject button. A large section of the front is occupied by a 7 inch TFT color screen that has a resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels. Right of that a rotary encoder to scroll through the menus. Pressing this knob will select the highlight menu option or pause the player when in playback. Below that four buttons for input selection, return to a higher level in the menu structure, stop and activate the menu. For primary operations it all falls into place within minutes. Time to go to the rear. At the left there is a ground screw to be used with for instance a turntable. To the right of that the IEC mains input with power switch and fuse. Further right 3 times digital out, AES EBU, TOSLINK and SPDIF. Then the analog preamp output, 3 digital inputs, again AES EBU, TOSLINK and SPDIF and a stereo analog audio input. Fully to the right is the tray for the hard disk or SSD suited for both 2.5 and 3.5 inch form factor. Above that two USB 3 connectors for external storage devices, one USB 2 for hooking up an external DAC, an HDMI connector to send both the user interface screen and audio to a TV or AV receiver in 720p and an RJ45 network connector. Then a moving magnet phono input, an F connector for the antenna and 2 times 2 speaker binding posts. This might be intimidating to some, but if you think of it as opportunities and take it step by step, it will all fall in place. For a device with this many functions, there still is quite some room free inside. That's not due to an economical design though. On the left we see a double power supply for the processor board and drives. The audio is fed by a toroidal transformer while the rectifier stabilization and capacitance is situated on the audio board. A solenoid switches off the power to the audio board when appropriate. The audio board is partly hidden behind other boards and carries the phono input board and a small vertical board that holds the tuner. It must also hold the ESS ES9018 K2M Sabre DAC chip that can handle digital signals up to 32 bit 384 kHz. Further to the left the power amp. This is a 2x100W in 8 ohms class D amp. 
allegedly based on Texas Instrument components. I couldn't verify this without taking the unit further apart. Completely on the right the processor board which holds the dual core ARM Cortex A9 running at 1 GHz with 1 GB main memory and 8 GB storage on eMMC, the more economical sibling of SSD. A SATA port is connected to the hard disk slot that is situated beneath the processor board and a second SATA port is connected to the DVD-R slot drive that is mounted towards the front. This is a readily available LG drive. All the parts mounted on the front are two PCBs holding the rotary encoders and the board holding the driver electronics for the screen. It all shows the modular thinking of Cocktail Audio. All modules use about the same computer code and, where appropriate, identical PCBs. Like car manufacturers nowadays use platforms to design a wider spectrum of models at lower cost. The number of functions on the X35 is impressive. Of course it is an amp with built in DAC that has the aforementioned two analog and three digital inputs plus the internal radio, digital player, airplay and rune render functions. But let's start with ripping a CD. The review sample came with the optional 3 terabyte hard disk so there is ample space. After inserting the CD the display shows the album and tracks it found and offers to change the file format to be used. I chose FLAC and accepted the metadata and the ripping started. It took slightly more than 8 minutes to rip. You can scroll through cover art in three sizes or use a character interface with many ways of sorting. By artist and album, on album name, on composer and so on. Using the remote control you can also jump directly to a title, artist or for instance composer by typing the first character. Here the numeric keys on the remote double as they do on a phone. Pressing the 4 gives you the G, pressing it twice gives you the H and so on. The remote control has many keys giving direct access to the myriad of functions available. For instance, dimming the screen brightness can be done using the rotary encoder to scroll through the menus but you can also press the green brightness uh, button on the remote. The same goes for showing the now playing screen, lyrics and so on. The Dutch distributor told me cocktail audio users often use the infrared remote instead of the also available iOS or Android app. That app is of average quality, not bad and easily accessible but somewhat limited in features and a tad slow when loading cover art. If you get bored with it, you could of course add room to your setup. You in fact just add computational power in the shape of an external computer. You could use the computer you already own or, for instance, add a Rune Rock server or Elac Discovery. See the links in the show notes. And you also need to buy a subscription to Rune except when using the Elac. The X35 plays PCM and DSD but when using Rune it doesn't seem to decode MQA. Please check the show notes to see if this gets confirmed by the manufacturer. You could also use an iOS device or iTunes since the X35 also supports AirPlay and of course MQA is not supported here since iTunes doesn't support FLAC and AirPlay might do sample rate conversion. If you already have music on your computer and want to add it to the X35, you log into the X35 using the Samba protocol just like you would approach a second computer in the file manager. You will see two volumes, local storage and music DB. The latter is read only and that is where the X35 stores the music it has indexed. Local storages is where you can find the hard disks and net shares that the X35 has access to. Normally only the HHD1, hard disk drive 1, will be accessible. Then I created a map called import and copied the music to it that I wanted to store on the X35. When the copying is done you go to the browser on the X35 and access the HHD there. Go to the import map, 
select the menu button and select import as shown here. You could choose to have the X35 copy or move the music to the music DB volume and whether you want the map there carry the name of the album, which you really want. You see other maps in HDD1. The cover art map I made to copy album art to that couldn't be retrieved from the web. From the music database you can then select cover art from this map. The My Audio CD is the map an album initially is ripped to and My Recording is where your recordings are stored. About that further on. You can of course copy a ripped CD or recording to your computer. All the inputs can be digitally recorded to the hard disk or shared volume on a NAS or computer. The sampling rate can be set up to 192 kHz 24 bit, which is also the highest sampling rate for the digital in and outputs. From the hard disk the X35 can play back PCM files up to 24 bit 384 kHz and DSD files up to DSD 256. MQA files are also fully decoded when playing through the X35 player. The online music service Tidal, Deezer, Cobus and Spotify are supported. I have tried Tidal since I have a Tidal subscription and that worked fine, including decoding the MQA files on Tidal. I suppose the same goes for when using Deezer when they start streaming MQA, which will be soon. The sound quality is in the realm of my setup too. See the link to the description of my reference sets in the show notes. Not that it sounds equal to the Marantz KI Lite in that set. The sound is more upfront with a slight accent to the top end. That works fine with many speakers, but very high resolution speakers might find this slightly too much. That doesn't mean one amp is superior, they are different approaches to the same unachievable ideal. The sound image is very spacious and fairly focused for its class. All digital sources sound the same, they use the same DAC, only DAB Plus sounds offensively bad, but this is due to the limitations of DAB Plus and not to blame on the X35. I just mentioned it for when you would have bought a unit you might think the radio receiver is defective. I had not planned to review the X35, but the unit was suggested to me by the distributor for a keynote I did on Rune for the Audio Association Midden-Nederland. And it seemed fun to me, storing the music on the X35, having it indexed and played back from, in this case, the ELAC Discovery to the X35 using the Rune Ready function. The big display gave extra drama to the demo. Already during the preparation I fell in love with the device, while the audio demo during the presentation impressed me so that I more or less wrestled the X35 loose from the distributor, who had just received his first sample. For seniors this is a very simple to operate unit. For people that don't want Wi-Fi in the home, there is no need for a tablet. The infrared remote together with the display is almost just as comfortable. And it is immense value. A 2x100W amp, a AS9018 base DAC, triple power supply, a ripper and burner, MQA certified streamer, room ready, airplay, DLNA, Samba, FTP, I wonder what I forgot. Anyways, these kinds of devices make it easier, easier for people with little or no sense of technology to have access to modern file based music. And it might be time for me to review more of these devices, provided I can find them and get a review sample on loan. So stay informed by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see a super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.